So, oh, we have a person from Iowa. Very cool. So my name is Ashley and I work for the Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina and I'm in Charleston, South Carolina right now. So I'm on the complete opposite end of our friends over in California, which is quite fun. I have lived in California though before, so I totally understand that three hour time difference and the communication issues that go on there. Um, but this is our program that we have going on in partnership with Girl Scouts of Mountains to Midlands, which is our sister council on the other half of the state here. And today we're going to be covering our brownie painting badge. And we have an actual artist on here. Her name is Kate. Hi. <laughs> Excited to be here. Kate, tell us where you're at. <laughs> well, I'm also in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and I'm in my apartment right now. <laughs> Very cool. So we're going to start off our meeting with the Girl Scout Promise in Law. So you don't have to unmute yourself. You can stand up if you like. Um, I'm going to continue to sit so you all can see me. And we're going to say our Girl Scout Promise in Law. So we'll start off with the promise. So on my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. And then we'll move on to the actual Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources, Horses wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Okay, so, so today, like I said, we're going to be covering our painting badge. We are going to be covering three steps out of the five today. So the purpose of this badge is as you complete it, you will have new ideas about what to paint and how to paint it. So the first step is to get inspired. And to do that, we're gonna to talk to a painter. And she's also going to be kind of just going through the slideshows with us as well. So our painter guest is Kate. And Kate yes. um, practices her art out of Redux Contemporary Art Studio, which is here in downtown Charleston. And they have put on a lot of classes for Girl Scouts before. Um, and then after this, we're also sending out an email that has a link to Redux's website that has more classes that you all can take on there as well. So go ahead, Kate. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Sure, yeah, so I, um, went to College of Charleston. I um, studied studio art there and um, I've been a full-time artist for a little over a year now. Um, I've been a Redux since uh, last July, so it hasn't been a full year, um, but it's been really awesome getting to work out of there. Um, and I am a mixed media artist. So I do a lot of painting, but I also do mixed media collage and um, lino cut block printing as well. Um, but there are some paintings behind me that are mixed media paintings. Um, and I incorporate these stamps that I make myself um, into my paintings. I actually have a couple um, behind me. So this is actually linoleum which is a print making material um, it's basically rubber that you can carve into with um, these print making carving tools but i love making these stamps um, and incorporating them into my work um, and that's what creates these pattern backgrounds um, is all these stamps that i make myself um, but yeah so i'm i definitely draw my inspiration from nature and um, I'm really drawn to pattern and bright colors, and you can see all of that in my work. Um, 
And I don't really have an end goal in mind when I first start creating. I just kind of let it um, organically flow. So, yeah. Very cool. So can you explain or maybe just give us some details about the pictures that we have on the slide right here? Sure. Um, yeah. So the photo on the far left, which is me painting, is actually from last week. So I have started doing a live painting and live music session every Thursday with a friend um, who is in Ohio. So he um, plays music while I paint. Um, so this piece on the far left is actually a work in progress. Um, and I'm probably going to finish that later this week on Thursday. Um, and the piece in the middle is actually, it's called Eclipse. And it is actually one of the first abstract paintings I did um, about a year ago. And it's probably still one of my favorite pieces. Um, and that's when I was like first really getting into the stamping the um, as part of painting. So I stamped the whole background um, and a, a theme I like to incorporate in a lot of my art is the moon or moon phases and also these archways um, because I, I just love both of those elements of symbolism because I feel like they they both kind of represent transition so you'll see that kind of symbolism in my work a lot and um, the painting on the far right is titled Flow for obvious reasons. Um, and that's actually a newer piece I did, um, kind of a experimental piece and um, where I incorporated letters for the first time on a piece of art. And that's the only one that I've done that with. But I think I do want to keep exploring that because it has it has this kind of cool like graffiti element to it. Yeah. Um, when I first saw that painting, I was like, there's letters on here. It took me a while to see it. And yeah. Then, so that's a that newer piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another thing I didn't mention is I use this um, scraper tool. I wish I had it with me, but it's really cool. It's kind of like, um, you know, like a knife has like serrated edges on it. So uh, the scraper tool I have has like these little teeth. And what I do, like in the far left painting on the screen, it's also behind me, <laughs> um, I layer paint. So the bottom layer is white, and then I layer black on top, and I take this scraper tool that has teeth in it that scrapes the paint away, and that's what creates those stripy patterns. And that's been a really fun tool to experiment with as well. And there, okay, there. oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. So I was just gonna say the piece in the middle on this slide is part of that series of um, like the first paintings I made about a year ago. You can tell it's similar to the other, the red one that's titled Eclipse. And it has the, the moon phases and the archway in it as well. Yeah, yes. we did did something we did a space science badge a couple of weeks ago but there we dealt with the phases of the it's very, very cool that's awesome hey i don't know why um sorry <laughs> um okay oh and then this um can you hear me you're breaking up a little bit <laughs> um, we're going to oh, go ahead. Can yes. You, you <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Kate. Comment on the the next. Oh. Um. Sorry, I didn't have the chat open. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. How can you begin making these types of paintings? Ooh, fun. Okay. So I, I should have provided some images of my collages as well, but um, it sounds like Ashley is providing a link to my website. So at the end, if you want to go to my website, there's a whole tab of collages as well. 
So kind of what started this whole thing was my love of collage making. And um, so I kind of developed this style of stamping, incorporating collage and painting with my smaller scale mixed media collages. And then these, this series of paintings has spurred out of it. So when I first started making these paintings, they were inspired by the collages that I had already made. So that's kind of like the um, stream of consciousness that happened behind that. Um, let's see. Did you mean to make it drippy? Yes, that was very intentional. I think the drips are really fun to incorporate um, in the art. And it's um, fun too, because a lot of the time when I'm painting, I'm constantly like flipping the painting um, upside down to just kind of play with the composition more. So like you'll see on this current slide that's up, the painting on the far left, the drips are going up. And that's because I had originally painted it upside down and then flipped it, if that makes sense. Um, really uh, cool. Thanks. Let's see if I, I wonder if I missed any. I think uh, like the texture. We're good that we were talking about. A lot of people oh, somebody asked if they were in a gallery. So just wanted to know how to take your classes and such. Um, yeah. So I am represented by a gallery here in Charleston. Um, it's called Traeger Contemporary, and they are closed for the foreseeable future, um, but they do have an online website. Um, but a lot of these pieces are for sale on my personal website, which Ashley has a link to. Oh yeah, you never knew people flip their paintings. Yeah, that's actually a, a technique I learned in um, art school. They taught us to, flip the piece upside down because it gives you a whole new perspective on the composition and can help you notice things about the painting that you wouldn't otherwise notice. And I think that's a really cool trick. Yeah. How yeah. did you... Let's ask this one last question with it. How did you do the butterfly picture? Yes, okay, so I was gonna talk about that. Um, so those are actually cut out images. Um, so I was saying earlier that I'm, I do collage as well. So I, I incorporate collage in a lot of my work and the butterflies are actually cut out from a calendar, an old calendar, and so are the flowers. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you painted behind them. Yes, so I did the painting first and then put the cut out images on top. Very cool. So, all right. Well, I know a lot of these girls actually want to paint, so we're going to continue to move on. Awesome. But I would love for you to stay on and talk about what we're going to do. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm happy to hang out. So um, Kate mentioned that she is inspired by nature. So we're going to do a landscape of what you see here. Um, a lot of us have some, I would actually say a lot of people on here, mountains and hills where they are. Uh, in Charleston, we don't. <laughs> but we do have them about mm, two to three hours away from here, so we can see them. So mm -hmm. what you'll need is a pencil or something to draw with in addition to paper and whatever type of paint you have at your house. So you can use watercolors uh, or you can use acrylic paint. That's what I have. So the, um, I'm going to be using so I have like acrylic paint. I see a lot of you all uh, have watercolors whoever Sarah Newman is. I see there's two girls on the screen but they have watercolors so that's great. And then we're going to be using brushes so you can use just like a normal brush whatever you feel like. Um, Kate what do you like to use? Most, so like, I yeah I use paint brushes a lot um, definitely. And I use these stamps that I was talking about earlier. So I have a ton of stamps that I made myself. And there's also this rolling tool that's really fun um, as an alternative to paintbrushes. If this is a printmaking tool as well. It's normally used to roll ink onto a stamp, but it's really fun to put paint on it and roll it onto a canvas too. 
Very cool. So what we're first going to do is this is and, and the point is just easier to things with a pencil first and then paint it. Does that make does that make sense, Kate? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to turn my camera down. So since we're doing a landscape, what I decided to do first is I'm just going to draw a line to where I want my ground to be and where I want my mountains to start. So I'm literally just going to do it in the middle of the page. So I'll have this be my ground and this will be my mountains. And then I'm just going to draw my mountains. And it doesn't have to be perfect in any way, shape or form because you're gonna put paint over it in the end. And then after you all draw those, you can use however many colors you want, whatever colors. Uh, as you can tell, Kate is also doing abstract art. So for example, if you really wanted to make the grass red, you can make the grass red. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love Kate, breaking Kate, do you want to talk about maybe how you, <laughs> <laughs> um, how have you done that in some of your meetings? Um, I mean, I'm always playing with color. It's so fun to just see um, what roles you can break with color, especially. Uh, that's my favorite part of art, I think, is that you can really do whatever you want. It's so free. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, oh. Is there anything else that you could talk about with maybe some landscaping? Like doing a landscape painting or anything? Yeah, let's see. Anything you've learned? Um, well, do you want me to talk about abstract landscape or realistic landscape? <laughs> I feel like it's a different set of rules. <laughs> um, let's do abstract since this okay. uh, painting um, well, just looking it can at, be done in abstract. Uh huh. Just looking at the example image you have up on the slide, I think um, it's really cool how there there are so many different ways you can emulate texture, you know. And it looks like in this example, you um, use your fingers to paint, which is really cool. Um, but I, yeah, I think incorporating texture is really fun to kind of mimic maybe like what grass would feel like or what tree bark would feel like. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of incorporate that in my work with the, the scraper tools that I use and the, the um, brayer that I use. And um, yeah, I think maybe something else you could do if you didn't want to finger paint was, um, you could take a paper towel and dab the paint with it to create a new texture or something like that, you know? Just like using tools around the house to kind yeah. of so we're play around with gonna it. We're going to actually get into that in, in one of our next steps. So with this, we're going to, we're running out of a little time. I always forget that the brownie sessions are a little bit shorter. But so for this, as you can see, I have just put some paint on a paper plate that I chose. And then what I can do is I can just go over this at any point. And with the landscape, the best part is, is that it's all about layering as well. Well, pretty much with any type of painting that you want to do is just layer it. So if I wanted to paint the grass green and I accidentally come over into the mountains, it's okay because I can layer it as well. And I can adjust as I go along. 
So because of the shortness of this session, uh, someone's doing their yard. Very cool. Yes. So you can paint as we go. Long. You can also come to um, okay. so talk. Kate actually talked about this a little bit earlier. So later on, you can. Um, sorry, I a question. As you paint, you can listen to music. So that's something that Kate does. Uh, Kate, oh, yeah. would you want to talk about how you maybe paint with feelings and music? Yeah, I pretty much always listen to music while I paint, and sometimes there's dancing involved. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have Spotify. I love Spotify. And really the playlists I listen to change daily. It just kind of depends on what mood I'm in. Um, but lately I've been really into like synthesized kind of music. Um, that's, that doesn't have lyrics usually. It's just kind of like music playing in the background. And that's been really nice and kind of relaxing to paint to. But sometimes I just want to listen to Lizzo and dance and paint, you know? So it really just depends on what mood I'm in. But I think music is a really powerful tool for, like, getting your creative juices flowing. Um, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I love, I work to music a lot. So yes. my yeah, work doesn't involve paintings. So it definitely I think helps that the time go by. Work. Work is great. Yes. So I know and that we're moving. You can go, go back and paint on your own. We definitely wanted to hear a lot that I because we don't have any here in Charleston. And you can paint whatever you want. You can paint an apple orchard, your backyard. You can even paint like, like your actual like bedroom or kitchen that you're in. Like that can be a landscape as well, where as long as there is a definitive line between, you know, the ground and the sky, whether it be, this could be like your kitchen up here, like your sinks and your countertops, and then this could be your floor where you have like your dining table and chairs and stuff like that. Like that's also would be considered like a type of landscape. Yeah, I love that. So, yeah. So the next step that we would do for this painting badge is painting without well. So what you would need This is pretty much what you all are doing right now, but, but you can use anything from cotton balls to Q-tips to a sponge. Uh, Kate said she uses her um, One thing I like to use a lot is just sponges. This is the long side here, or I can just dab with the short end. Um, yes, it's a on a brush type of thing, but it's a sponge. Um, anything else, Kate, that you might paint with besides like your stamps and fingers or anything else around the house you could think of painting with? I'm trying to think. Um, uh, like a, a rag would be kind of cool, like a towel or something. Oh, yeah, you can paper towel. Actually, mm -hmm. I have a paper towel right here, and I don't know if you all can see, but I have like a print on it. Yeah, so you can use that as well. Yeah, that's a cool idea because then it would put like a, a pattern in it almost. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Someone 
was listening to Elmo's World. So that's a great cheery. I saw that. <laughs> it's cute. So what we'll do is, like I said, because we're running out of time a little bit, but I'm just going to take a, a sponge, just like a normal sponge that I cut, and I'm going to do a rainbow. So for this, you can choose whether you want the page to be vertical or horizontal. And also, if you want, you can always do what Kate does and just flip it upside down after you get started. It's a fun technique. Yeah, I honestly have never thought of that either. So I'm going to make a skinny rainbow. As you can see, there's texture to it. And you can always go back through and use your fingers or you can use, like we said, a paper towel. Or if you have stamps at home, that would be cool as well. And I'm not following the rules <laughs> either because I'm gonna make my rainbow whatever colors I want it to be because I also <laughs> don't know, yeah. So these are actually two of my favorite colors together. It's like this teal color and gray. I love those colors together. And you can just match it all in. And then I'm gonna go a little crazy and add some red. Red is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> Yeah. I'm starting to really love yellow. I was not really a big fan of yellow before, but for some odd reason, I'm just, it's a bright, happy color, and I think that's what we need right now. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So I've just made some, you know, just some lines, but now I'm going to go back through and just flip my sponge and just dab them kind of like together. And we'll be sending out this video later on as well. So you can go back and you can pause it whenever you want. You can go back and listen to us talk. You know, that we went pretty fast through this. And add some more blue into this. I made my own abstract rainbow. <laughs> I love it. Thanks. Like I said before, I don't feel that I'm artsy with paint, but I can try. <laughs> I think it looks really cool. Thank you. <laughs> Someone's doing a rainbow with sponge. Very cool. Your last step for step five. This is actually one if you take like a used tablecloth or a plastic one and put it on a wall. And the mural is basically something that like tells a story that covers like a whole wall type of thing. Um, do you have any expertise on that, Kate? Or no, I've never painted a mural, but I think it would be a really cool challenge to paint on such a large scale. Um, yeah. If I you could paint, really yeah, if you could paint a mural, like what would you paint? Ooh, um, I probably do an abstract image, like one of these pieces behind me. Um, okay, just huge, 
I think it would be cool to see it on like a really big scale. And I, I think I would have to use different tools too. So that would be an interesting challenge. Yeah. So has, if um, you all, oh, Autumn, I see your uh, rainbow. That, that's beautiful. Can you hold it back up again, Autumn Purse? I love it. Very cool. So if I could paint a mural, I would do the story of um, from Beauty and the Beast. And when she's walking through her town, when she's singing. Um, yeah, she's like saying hello to all the village and people. Going details with all the characters. Yeah, it's just, it's a fun, like, it's a fun time. Yeah, it's just, there's so many details to think. Yeah, so. that would be a really cool mural. Yeah, I would basically do anything from a Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, that's it for our badge work today. And like I said before, we're going to send out an email so you can go back through and watch this. And you can pause it and everything as you go along. And then also we're going to send out within that email, there's going to be link Kate's website and then also to Redux's website where you can also take other classes as well. Oh, someone said that they would paint the Princess Bride. That's a great idea. I know, well. I saw that. I love that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm yeah. actually teaching a class through Redux if people want to check it out. It's a collage making class. It starts next Tuesday. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. And then we'll definitely be having some classes coming up if you're in our council, the or even in any other council, you can always travel to Charleston as well. Um, and you can take in person classes when those start back up as well at Redux. So yeah. All right. Well, Thank you so much, Kate, for being on today's badge workshop with us. And Thanks for having Girl me. Scout, thank you for, Girl Scout, thank you for joining us. Be sure to tune in later on this afternoon. We're going to be going live on Facebook again. And then also we're going to be going, we have another class next week. Next, um, gosh, what day is today? Tuesday, right? <laughs> Yes, yes, Tuesday. today is Tuesday. <laughs> I know, I'm losing track of time. Um, so we'll be going live again next week for another brownie bat. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be doing another uh, brownie bat next week as well. And that will be included in the email that we send out as well for what that one is. So thank you all so much. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your time painting. It was a joy painting with you all today. And thank you, Kate, again for having You're us. Or coming thank up. Thank you. Uh, Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. That's -bye. Oh, Sarah. That's beautiful. I see that. Sarah Newman's video. I saw your mountains. Very pretty. <laughs>